Hello, it's National Share a Story Month, so I'm going to share a story with you. This story is taken from uh, Norwegian folk tales. Um, the Norse myths, the Norwegian folk tales, are really interesting. They're full of trolls and adventure and so forth. They often have very plain titles though because the, the, they've been translated very literally. So this one is called The Boys Who Met the Trolls in the Hedel Woods. On a small farm in Vega in Gudbrandsdale, there once lived in the old days a poor couple. They had many children and two of the sons who were half grown always had to wander about the countryside begging. So they were familiar with all the roads and trails. And they also knew the shortcut to Hadel. One day they wanted to go there, but they had heard that some falconers had built a hut at Mayella, and they wanted to stop there too, to see the birds and how the men caught them. So they took the footpath over Longmoss. But it was already late in the autumn, and the dairymaids had gone home from the summer pastures, and there was nowhere the boys could find to shelter, nor food either. So they had to keep to the road to Hadel, but that was only an overgrown cow path, and when the darkness came, they lost the path, nor did they find the falconers out either, and before they knew it, they were right in the midst of the thickest part of the Bjolstad forest. When they realised they couldn't find their way out, they started cutting branches, made a fire, and built themselves a shelter of pine branches, for they had a hatchet with them. And then they gathered heather and moss, of which they made a bed. A while after they'd lain down, they heard something snuffing and snorting very hard. The boys were all ears, and listened well to hear whether it might be an animal or forest troll that they heard. But then it started snorting even harder and said, I smell the smell of Christian blood here. Then they heard it tread so heavily that the earth shook under it, and they could tell that the trolls were out. God help us, what will we do now? said the younger boy to his brother. Oh, you'll just have to stay under the fir tree where you're standing, and be ready to take the bags and run for your life when you see them coming. I'll take the hatchet, said the other. Just then they saw the trolls come rushing, and they were so big and tall that their heads were level with the treetops of the fir trees. But they had only one eye among all three of them, and they took turns using it. Each had a hole in his forehead to put it in, and guided it with his hands. The one who went ahead had to have it, and the others behind him held on to him. Take to your heels, said the elder of the boys, but don't run too far before you see how it goes. Since they have an eye so high up, it'll be hard for them to see me when I come behind them. Well, the brother ran ahead with the trolls at his heels. In the meantime, the elder brother went behind them and chopped the hindmost troll in the ankle so that he let out a horrible shriek. Then the first troll became so frightened that he jumped and dropped the eye. The boy wasn't slow in grabbing it up. It was bigger than two pot lids put together and it was so clear that even though it was pitch black, the night became as light as day when he looked through it. <laughs> When the trolls discovered that he had taken the eye from them and that he would wounded one of them, they started threatening him with all the evil there was if he didn't give them back the eye that very minute. I'm not afraid of trolls or threats, said the boy. Now I have three eyes to myself and you don't have any and two of you have to carry the third. If we don't get back our eye this very minute, you'd be turned into sticks and stones, shrieked the trolls. But the boy felt there wasn't any hurry. He was afraid of neither boasting nor magic, he said. If they didn't leave him alone, he would chop all three of them so that they would have to crawl along the hills like creeping, crawling worms. When the trolls heard this, they became frightened and started to sing another tune. It pleaded nicely that if he gave them back their eye, he would get both gold and silver and everything he wanted. Well, the boy thought that was all very fine, but he wanted the gold and silver first. So he said that if one of them would go home and fetch so much gold and silver that he and his brother could fill their bags and give them his brother two good steel bows besides, then he would get the eye. But until then, he would keep it. The trolls carried on and said that none of them could walk as long as he didn't have an eye to see with. But then one of them started yelling for the old woman, for they had one old wo woman among the three of them. After a while there was an answer in the mountain far to the north. So the trolls said, 
that she was to come with two steel bows and two pails full of gold and silver, and it wasn't long before she was there. When she saw what had happened, she started threatening with magic. But the trolls became still more frightened and bade her be careful of the little wasp, so she couldn't be certain that he wouldn't take her eye too. So she flung the buckets, the gold, the silver and the bows at them, and strode home to the mountain with the trolls. Since then, no one has ever heard that the trolls have been about in Heedle Woods, sniffing after Christian blood. Well, there you go, an old Norse tale. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>